And uh, welcome to this week's episode of The Good Ram Show with me, Chris Goodrum. As per usual, a big thank you to everybody that watched uh, the previous episode of the show, um, liked, commented, all that kind of stuff. Uh, also, a big, big thank you to everybody that turned out for the Nottingham Whiskey Festival last weekend, um, which is the reason why there wasn't an, an episode of the show, because um, I was obviously <laughs> meeting you guys in the flesh, which was quite nice, or some of you anyway. Um, anyway, yeah, so um, after after last year's rather disappointing um uh, takings in in the shop. Uh, I I was a little bit weary of what was going to sort of happen this year. But you know we had a good day in the shop. Lots of lots of you lovely people put your hand in your pocket and purchase stuff, including purchasing our uh, our bottling of Storsha, the second part of the cask that I had bottled last year. So here it is. Um, yeah. And uh, as you can see, sporting a brand spanking new label after last year's. Um, uh, issues shall we say so I completely and utterly redesigned the label uh, and you know what I'm really 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 happy with it I think it looks bloody good um, and obviously a lot of people seem to agree with me because a lot of people at the uh, uh, at the, uh, the, the, the the festival were saying that it was the best whiskey they tasted on the day um, I, I mean some of them were probably blowing smoke it has to be said but you know it, it's just lovely to hear and <laughs> puts the pressure on for next year, doesn't it, really, as I've got to sort of find something uh, uh, that uh, is of equal uh, or maybe even better quality. Um, whew, that's going to be a job, isn't it? I mean, I mean, I was quite fortunate in the fact that, you know, obviously having access to, to the, the cask of Storcia and then being able to just re, uh, do the second bottling. I mean, I did obviously taste it, as you well know, um, uh, and I wouldn't have bottled it if I thought it was complete pants um so <laughs> yeah that was that was quite fortunate anyway um we shifted quite an awful lot of it there was 100 bottles uh about 70 odd have already been sold in this short period of uh, time so if you want one um you better put skates on and uh, get hold of a bottle it's uh, retailing for 17.595 available on the gauntlet's website um and like i said that ain't gonna last very much longer so yeah get yourself a bottle uh, i mean i will do an episode of the show with it in, in due course i don't quite know when don't think i've got enough um uh, other Storcia samples to do a, a Storcia comparison so it may well have to be a sort of a, a random selection of peated stuff just to sort of see how it stacks up against that and well I think it will stack up pretty well otherwise I wouldn't have bottled it anyway um, enough about that uh, let's talk about um, today's episode of the show as you can see from the title page uh, we're looking at some new releases from both Lag and Aaron uh, um, Mariella, the, uh, the the brand um, ambassador for both distilleries, kindly sent me these samples over over a couple of months, uh, which was very very kind. So big big thank you to Mariella from that. Um, the other reason, I guess, for doing this episode, apart from obviously you know uh, I am a big fan of both of these distilleries, is that um, there's a bit of a funny story, I suppose, uh, attached to it. Um, yeah, yeah it, was, it is a funny story, I suppose, in, in a manner of speaking. Um, anyway, I got an email from um, Ben at um, Indie Brands that, that distribute both distilleries, uh, offering me some other stuff. Um, and uh, I forget what, what, what it was now, but it, he also mentioned uh, a Macri Moore 10 year old. And I thought, Macri Moore 10 year old? Didn't even know there was a Macri Moore 10 year old. I had absolutely no idea that said bottling existed. So I replied to him and said, Never, didn't even know about this. Can I have some? Reply comes back, oops, sorry, I shouldn't have told you about that. Well, mm, you know what my reaction to that was? <laughs> yeah, it was. It was like <laughs> indignation. How, how dare you? You know, I've been a, a customer of, uh, of Aaron for donkey's years, bought Aaron Direct and from its various distributors. And, uh, you know, you weren't going to tell me about this particular bottling. Anyway, it, it happens. I know that I don't get often a lot of the sexy kit, you know, at the end of the day. Uh, I, and there are several reasons. One, I'm a small fry, you know, compared to the likes of you know who and you know who and you know who. Um, you know, they'll take, they'll polish up pretty much all allocations of everything. Uh, the other is other 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 issues. 
price I mean I don't get offered the silly money stuff because I don't have customers for it so there's absolutely no point in bothering to offer it to me because I just ain't going to buy it um, also the thing is I have this horrible tendency to ask for samples all of the time um, and sometimes these releases are just too limited and there isn't samples available and there are times you know I like to know what the hell I'm buying you know I don't I mean yeah nine times out of ten um, this kind of stuff is going to be pretty incredible but you know I, I, I want to make sure and so there's no sample stock available so I don't get offered it you know it, it, you know, it, it happens you know um, so you know no 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 sort of um you know i've got no malice towards ben for uh, uh for that i'll give him his dues he did come back to me and did offer me a case at the end of the day uh which i thought yeah what the hell i've made a fuss about it now i better buy the bloody thing um <laughs> which is why i then asked mariella for a sample and she kindly sent me these uh, other aaron samples that were due out uh, so yeah i thought yeah let's let's do an episode of the show i love aaron and and, uh, and i've got uh, a growing appreciation for for lag i love the uh, the distillery um so yeah i thought let's let's do an episode on the on these samples so not really a great deal else to say as like i said i've done episodes of the show on aaron a number of times before and i did an episode of the show on lag not so long ago with the inaugural releases um so let's just take a look at today's lineup then shall we? right okay so we're going to kick off with the three Aaron samples, the uh, new releases. The first one is called um, the Aaron Signature Series 1 Remnant Renegade, bottled at 46%. Uh, now, this is a brand spanking new release, just come out. Um, it's a vatting of uh, bourbon barrels, sherry hogsheads, and sherry butts that come from uh, 1997 to 2017. Now, um, there ain't going to be an awful lot of 1997 distilled spirit in that because we well know about uh, Aaron's proclivity for selling off their casks when they were a young uh, distillery. So um, apparently most of the, the, the juice has come from um, 2010 to 2012. So you know, nice age to it, um, nice packaging, uh, very eco uh, in a Hessian sack bag thing as opposed to uh, a box. Um, Next bottling we'll be looking at is uh, the Aaron 17 year old, again bottled at 46%. This is the sort of replacement for last year's 18 if you like. Um, it's a combination of first fill bourbon and first and second fill sherry. So looking forward to that one. Uh, then we have the aforementioned Macri Moore 10 year old bottled at 46%. Uh, this is batch L. 2005-23 so obviously that being the the bottling date um and again uh holy american oak aged and uh bottled 46 percent then we're going to move on to the three uh bottlings from lag so it includes the first the two of the first the, the, well, the first two uh core releases shall we say so the first one is the kill mori uh bottled at 46 percent and uh, aged in all uh, no, bourbon ex bourbon casks bottling number two is the Corey Cravey uh, this was bottled at 55% uh, originally aged in bourbon barrels before six month finishing in Miguel Martin Oloroso Sherry Hogshead and in six months that's picked up quite a lot of colour um, so that will be interesting to see how that one is balanced and the final one uh, is quite a, an intriguing bottling this is uh, a lag distillery exclusive so you can only get your mitts on this if you actually go all the way and visit the distillery uh, it's the hand fill three-year-old distilled in 2019 uh, bottled uh, this year or will be <laughs> if you actually go and visit the distillery or so certainly this sample was drawn off should we say this year uh 61.7 percent oh uh, no <laughs> keep that one for the end i think um uh, it's uh, uh peated to 50 parts per million second fill sherry hogshead lg 19 stroke 1795 and like i said available only at the distillery so um it's really cool to get to get a sample of something like that so uh without much more uh fanfare let's kick off with the remnant renegade then. Just so and 
Right, okay, so let's see what the nose on the Remnant Renegade gives us then, shall we? say something now after all of that I mean it is um frankly stunning absolutely stunning I mean you can smell the maturity the, the mature American oak the mature sherry um but it's got a lovely fresh coastal character it's got some tropical fruit peach pear nutty oak um a little bit of creamy oak creamy American oak subtle subtle sherry subtle sherry um I mean a little bit of dried fruit, a little bit of raisins, but it's just got this beautiful balance of um, freshness and maturity. Um, yeah, stunning, absolutely stunning. I mean, you know, when I tasted this the first time, I was just like, oh my God, I've got to have some of this. This is incredible. Um, it's just classic, classic sort of fresh and mature Aaron. I mean, what's not to love? I mean, mm. so pass on. It's just, just stunning, absolutely stunning. Kicks off with the mature American oak, the dusty, sawdusty uh, American oak. Um, and the sherry comes in fairly promptly on the mid palate, and there is, it's more noticeable on the palate, more raisinated dried fruits, a little bit of walnut, spice, hickory possibly, uh, coffee, um, and then it just sort of, it just slowly dissipates on the palate and the American oak and the um, Aran sort of tropical, mature tropical fruit kind of come back with a little bit of creamy oak as well. Um, nutty, a little nuttiness as well on the aftertaste. I mean, that is just absolutely stunning. Stunning progression. Lovely, like I say, lovely vatting. Um, it has that you know mature element that is just so noticeable but balancing that up that sort of younger fresher element um it's retail price is actually pretty reasonable considering you know how some of the mature spirit that's gone into, into that i think it's about uh, on the website excuse me for about sort of 80 odd quid um stunning uh i mean i just poor oh, what a star what a start. Right, okay, so let's move on to the 17-year-old. Let's see what the nose gives us on this end, shall we? Well, as you can see from the colour, um, it's displaying quite a lot of sherry character to start off with. You know, almond, walnut, dark dried fruit, um, prune, you know, very oloroso -y. Um But... It's not an overwhelming sherry monster. I can get um, uh, coastal, sort of salty, uh, briny, apricot, a little bit of American oak, um, some lovely, mature, slightly tropical Aran fruit, um, citrus, touch of spice. I mean, I prefer, the, the, I must admit, the, uh, the Remnant Renegade to the 17, it has to be said. Um, purely because it's, it's a little bit not too much sherry but it's a little there's more more sherry than uh to be frank that i i would really really like but like i say i think the balance is really really good if you like um slightly more, more mature sort of sherry notes it's certainly got that it's got the sort of um it's got some you know distillery character as well so overall i think the balance is it's not not too shabby shall we say let's talk about it Mm. really quite chewy um so yeah palate kicks off again with a lot of the sherry character dried fig prune walnut um raisin um coffee that kind of thing um but i am getting some mature tropical fruit coming through on the mid palate the the american oak is showing as well um a little bit of spiciness some saltiness 
I mean, this is the thing that I do. I have found about Aaron and Sherry. Um, uh, most of the time, the, uh, the 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 balance is really good. You can still get even the twenty-one-year-old, which is yeah, or, or was uh, considerably. Um, heavier on the sherry uh, still displayed some Aaron character and, and and that is just down to the the skill of uh, of the the master blender at Aaron I mean um yeah the balance has always been the thing with uh, apart from the port finish one that, that, that I've never got on with never really liked that at all um aside from that you know I, I mean that that I mean I prefer the, the the remnant renegade but even so I mean that is just a stunning whiskey yeah. Right, okay, so let's move on to the Macri Moore 10 year old, which was <laughs> what caused all the fuss in the first place to a certain extent, if you see what I mean. Now, I like peated Aaron. Um, it just has this freshness, this lemoniness, this citricness, this um, salty peat. It's not sort of, um, it's not a peat monster. Um, it's certainly mellowed a little bit. There's some white fruit, apricot, a little bit of earth. Now the peating does seem to sort of take away some of that sort of subtropical Aaron kind of character and, and, and it is more min almost yeah, it is more almost minerally and citric and quite not quite austere, but we're heading in that kind of uh, area. Um a little bit of herbal notes, bog myrtle possibly, um some nice fruit. I mean it's it, again it's it's an an elegant peated whiskey, I would say. It's not overly peated. Um, it's just just really very very nice. Um, so pass on. Soft. Citric, briny, sooty. The peat is very sooty. Um, showing some more American oak. American oak coming through on the mid palate. Slightly creamy, a little bit of vanilla. Um, there's a touch of violet. Um, again, some bog myrtle. Um, plenty of salt. Lots and lots of salt. Really salty. Citric theme keeps running through, right through to the very end. Um, a little bit of seaweed on the aftertaste really long lingers amazingly well again not a peat monster lovely amount of peat just about the right amount of peat in my personal opinion um and it it's just gorgeously balanced at the end of the day again you know kind of <laughs> what do you expect from aaron i mean you know that that is just absolutely very very classy Okay, so let's move on to the Kilmory. Let's, let's see what the nose gives us on this thing, shall we? <laughs> now that's intense, it has to be said. It's got that almost kind of tequila kind of character. It's got that pulped white fruit, agave, you know, it's, it just it just says agave to me. Um, it's got sort of pepper, manure peat, um, peppery peat, um, quite salty there's a dry pea element as well it's actually got a lot of complexity within the 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 peat character um i don't know sort of if they sort of specify you know various uh, levels of um where the peat is cut from i don't know whether they go kind of go that far but um it's and i, and I certainly remember that the distillery's sort of aim if you like was to um, look into the sort of the characteristics of peat um, and that's almost a bit like sort of Octomore in that, that um, when you know that, that it's so heavily peated that, that that's kind of the focal point stupid thing to say um, but th no the individual elements of peat you know the tarry peat the dry peat the sooty peat etc etc um, and I have to say that this is along those kind of lines. Obviously, not as heavily peated as uh, as Optimal, um, but there's an element of barley there as well. So again, I'm, it, it really does remind me of Optimal because even with Optimal, you still get the Brookladdy element coming through. And um, certainly, you know, this bottling has peat, but it has 
barley has a little bit of sweetness as well again really well balanced and it's a like I said it's a, an, an interesting um, nose that you just kind of have to kind of work on because of the sort of like the the, the shades of peat character shall we say anyway let's see what passes up Live. It's got a citric, oily, oily citrus, um, almost mineral. It's got a salty minerality, um, salt as well. Again, lovely sort of combination of different peat characters. It's got some dry peat, some earthy peat, a little bit of medicinal peat, some bog myrtle. Um, Again, there's that kind of pulped white fruit character, that tequila-esque kind of note. A little bit of faintiness, nothing to get bent out of shape about. It's got a, a sort of a controlled rawness. Now, I think if that had been bottled at car strength, that raw note might have been more sort of prevalent. Um, and um, But it kind of adds to the... To the intensity and it adds to the fun if you like um, it really is a great whiskey for something that's incredibly young at the end of the day I mean you know I don't, can't, I don't know how old exactly it is but <laughs> it's not very old at all at the end of the day you know um, but it's just great it's a great whiskey it's really good um, it wasn't particularly expensive. I don't have, you know, I certainly don't have any stock of it. Now I've still got some stock of the Corrie Crazy, uh, but the Kilmory is all, all gone. I mean, it, I think it retailed for what, just under fifty quid. You know, like a lot of the the newer distilleries, you know, that they, they wanted you, the customer, to sort of you know, buy the whiskey and enjoy the whiskey. So the pricing was really sensible, um, and you know what, bloody good. Right, okay, so let's move on to the Corrie Gravy. Let's see what the nose gives us on this end, shall we? Six months in, in Oloroso, prob and I think, um, well, it doesn't say first fill, but I'm pretty much convinced first fill, because you wouldn't get this kind of colour and intensity of sherry character if it wasn't. So, dark raisinated fruits, prune, walnut, sweet fig, um... Dry peat, maybe not so complex uh, on the peat front. It's kind of dry, sort of peat briquette kind of smoke. Um, a little bit of citrus, a little bit of vanilla, a little bit of barley, but focus is fair and square on the sherry character. Um, yeah, it's there's there's just enough balance there to keep me kind of interested. It's not just a, a peat and sherry monster. Um, there is some sweet barley notes kind of coming through doesn't quite have the rawness of the Kilmore it doesn't have that pulped tequila kind of character um, probably that's the, the sherry kind of just blanketing that kind of youthful note but I like it yep yeah, it's 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 pretty damn good at the end of the day that's the part time Nice palette. Um, again, quite sherry focused, um, quite treacly, sweet, um, but the alcohol and the, the saltiness kind of offset that sweetness. Um, so again, the, the, the finish is quite, although dry, it's salty um, and you know, really pleasantly balanced. There's a, a little rawness creeps through right on the finish, just basically saying this spirit is still there and it is still quite young. Um, there's some, there's some lovely yeah, dusty peat, um, kind of earthy peat. Again, the peat character isn't quite so complex, but you know that that's the, that's what happens with sherry. Sherry does tend to be a little bit blanketing. Um, now I, I can see that sort of you know the distillery wants to release different sort of. Um, uh, you know, different cast types, use different cast types because 
getting because you guys are you know the, the the buying public like a like a bit of sherry you know um but for me the Kilmore is the more interesting and intriguing bottling because it has the purity and you know that's just me um from a drinking point of view i'm i'm i like yeah the the the, the cory gravy lovely whiskey has to be said um not quite as complex uh let's just see what a little drop of water does to it um Right, okay, yes, yeah, so not so much sherry influence now. This is kind of bringing forward the, the spirit character. Um, green apple, apricot, more saltiness, less peat though. I mean, this is often the case when you put a little drop of water with peated whiskies. Um, the peat tends to drop off as well. So it's kind of however you like your poison at the end of the day. If you want sort of more sherry and, and more peat, then just and you can quite happily i mean drink that uh, you know without any any water at all uh it doesn't need diluting i mean it's what 50 55 percent and it really doesn't taste that i mean that's, that's quite, quite dangerous um yeah it's certainly brought out that sort of sweeter barley note um and it's kind of i think now with bet with a bit of water it's better balanced i'm getting a lot more spirit character i'm getting a lot closer to the the kilmory um not got quite the sort of um complexity of peak character um but yeah i think the balance has improved with a little drop of water let's see what the next is yeah. mm. a lot more sweeter barley on the on the palate now um slightly peppery again wispy peat now the peat is is I wouldn't say practically disappeared, but it's it's become quite ephemeral, quite sort of wispy. Um, more apricot, sort of apple, um, dusty soot as well. The, the, the sherry has practically almost disappeared. Um, There's a, a smidge of kind of dried fruit just sort of on the edges, but, um, you, know, di you know, putting a little drop of water really does kind of cancel out that sherry completely, which is... A, quite surprised actually to sort of see it kind of you know change quite so dramatically um but like i said you kind of lose some of the comp kind of peak complexity uh, at the end of the day but personally I, I just think i like prefer that with with a little drop of water it has to be said um but then you know that you know me and Sherry. <laughs> Right, okay, so on to the final bottling of the day. This is the exclusive hand-filled three-year-old. Let's see what the nose gives us on this end, shall we? Okay, there's there's a kind of... It's kind of between the two somewhere. But it somewhere sits between the Kilmory and the, and the Cory Cravey. Um, it's got that fresh citric, uh, oily citrus kind of character. A um, little bit of dried fruit. A little bit of sultana, apricot, herbal peat, sooty peat, um, a little bit of Turkish delight. It is quite young. A um, bit of green apple as well. I like that nose. That, that's a nice nose. Like I said, it's kind of sitting somewhere between the two um, uh, core bottlings, shall we say. And um, ah, that's a nice nose. Um, yes, it's young not too fainty there's a, an element of the faints on there but i mean nothing to get sort of too worked up about let's see what the like. oh you can tell that's 60 percent oh that's tighter than a natch dubri um Ooh. Again, I'm getting that kind of pulped agave kind of note. Um, green apple, citrus, earthy peat. Again, it's a bit fainty, it has to be said. Uh, it is three years of age at the end of the day. Um, very salty, quite herbal on the finish, um, even though it's pretty masked and the, the alcohol is really quite intense. Um, let's see what a little drop of water does to it. Oh, 
Okay, so it's slightly more barley focused. Again, the kind of um, the peat has dropped off. I'm getting a lot more of that youthful, young pulp de gave kind of fruit. Um, a little bit of citrus and tamarind, satsuma. Again, the peat is not as complex. Um, it's kind of more kind of earthy, um, and it's kind of there, if you see what I mean. Um, Now I think at the distillery, I think you can buy either a full size bottle or, or you can buy a 20 CL bottle and I think the 20 CL bottle is about 30 quid. Um, if it was me, I, I would just buy the, 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 the small bottle. It's kind of, it's a nice, it's a nice whiskey. I don't think I'd want an entire 70 CL bottle of it though, that's the thing. It is got, it is a little bit on the overly youthful side. Um, it's got some 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 rawness, um, but you know, let's see what on. Again, soft, not so much peat, a little bit of sweet barley. Again, more emphasis on that sort of pulp de gave kind of fruit, um, sooty on the finish uh, and the aftertaste. Again, pleasant. Um, like I said, I wouldn't wouldn't buy an entire bottle, but a 20 CL, I'd, I'd be more than happy with. <clears throat> right, okay, so let's sum today's episode of the show. Uh, firstly, a big, big thank you to Mariella from um, the, 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 the distillery for the... Uh, yeah. <laughs> Right, okay, so let's sum today's episode of the show. Firstly, a big thank you to Mariella for the samples for today's episode of the show. Um, I thought it was great fun. Really, really enjoyed that. Um, the Remnant Renegade, buy it, buy it, buy it, buy it. If you love Aaron, buy it. That's all I'm going to say about it. 17-year-old, yeah, okay, nice. A um, little heavy on the sherry, um, but there was some balance there. Enough balance just to keep me interested, but, you know... Remnant Renegade. I mean, it's just, um, but still, you know, pricey, hundred and something odd quid, for, but half the course for a seventeen-year-old. But yeah, re really, very, very good. Uh, Macrimore, ten-year-old. Oh, love that. I mean, I, I love Macrimore anyway. I mean, it has, like I say, it has this, this kind of elegance almost. You know, that citric sort of freshness. Um, loses some of the tropical arany fruit, but you know, just gains in that freshness. And that ten-year-old was just, just. Just delightful, it has to be said. Um, the Lag Kilmory, I just thought was superb. It just said everything about the distillery that I wanted it to say. Yeah. American oak, um, lovely complexity within in the peak character, um, good intensity, you know, good price, or was good price at the time. Um, really, really enjoyed that. Um, Cory Cravey, I mean, yeah, okay, if you like a bit more peat with your sherry, um, no, peat with your sherry, um, sherry with your peat, um, I, I should say, um, that's going to be up your street. Um, really good at the end of the day. Maybe not quite as complex as the, the Kilmory, that's because of the, the sherry element, but then, you know, you lose some, you gain some, you know, it's just the, the way it is. Um, and the distillery um, uh, hand fill, I mean, yeah, lovely, but uh, really appreciate it getting the sample of that um and um it has its wrinkles it has to be said it's it's a three-year-old spirit at the end of the day it's not going to be you know um uh, lovey and what have you um but you know still to me great whiskey at the end of the day so um all that's left to say is i hope you enjoyed this week's episode of the show good dramming and good afternoon it's going on.